Without the word of God, I'm just going to be talking to myself. And the word of God that's coming to you all today is coming from the book of Judges, chapter 4 and 5. Yeah? The book of Judges, chapter 4 and 5. So, make sure you write it down and you read. It's two main chapters. But what is going to happen here is, I'm going to tell you the story. Now, everything that Jesus does starts with prayer and ends with prayer. So let's bow down our heads and pray and call the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, as we gather here, your children have gathered to worship and fellowship with you and ask for blessings, deliverance, and healing from you. As we share the word of God this day, Lord, we pray that our heart will be open. So this seed that will be sown in our hearts will be the seed that will multiply in tenfolds in our lives, in our spiritual lives. Clear our heads and our minds and our spirits out of any darkness so we'll be able to hear your word and walk with your word in jesus christ's name i pray everybody say amen 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 so the word of god coming to you is coming from the book of judges chapter 4 and 5 as i said in this story is about one of the judges a lady called deborah yeah deborah before the israelites had kings they used to have judges and deborah was a prophetess she normally sits around a palm tree and people will bring their cases and she will do the judge and stuff however this time in the life of israel they committed sin again so god put them into the hands of this canaanite king and this king was disciplining them they were like almost in slavery and this king had 900 iron chariots. So not only the Israelites, but every nation around Canaan at that point were afraid of this king. And his, uh, uh, how do call it, uh, 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 commanding leader. Called Jabin. Now, Barak was Israel's commanding officer. So he came to Deborah and said, look. We need to go and fight the skin because if we don't our life is all useless at the moment so deborah said you go and you win but this commander was afraid and said i will only go and fight this canaanite uh, uh, commander if you come with me but at that point deborah made a prophecy and said okay today God is going to bring what? Honor and victory to a woman. So, they advised, uh, Deborah advised uh, 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 Barak to go to a particular area, a mountain, and if these people of Canaan see that the Israelite army is there, they will come and attack, and God will prevail himself. Now, this is very important. When the Israelite army was on the mountains and jabbing attack with the 900 chariot and stuff like that. Something happened miraculously. If you read Deborah chapter 5, verse 2, many people volunteered to come and fight. Now, when the war began, the earth trembled. The clouds decided to what? pour down with heavy rain. The mountain begin to shake. All of a sudden, if you read verse 5, the stars decided to fight. Verse 5, uh, five verse 20. Swept a strong wind of torrent. Even the horses that the Israelites had were also fighting. Because any Canaanite soldier that was on the floor, the horses were using their feet like that. However, one part tribe called the Meros, an angel came down, verse 23, and said, I curse these inhabitants because they did not come and help Adonai in this war. My brothers and sister, my brothers and sister, this message is very, very important that we can take into our life. That we need to know that God is at war. 
the world that we are in everything that we are seeing in the physical there's a battle that's gone on last night for you to wake up today are you aware battle is going on constantly god is at war now when the rain and the earth and the horses and the wind everything decided to fight that is nature fighting an angel came and cursed a group of tribe called the mirrors who did not come and fight with the Israelites because they are also people of Israel. Now, what happened is Jabin, the chariots and everything they had, because of the rain and the ground is all soaked, what happened? They left the chariots and ran away and the Israelites pursued them and killed all of them. And victory came toward the Israelite people. Now, the message I'm trying to bring to you all this day is very simple. Look at how nature was fighting for God. The wind is fighting. The rain is fighting. The heavens is fighting. The earth is fighting. Even horses are fighting. Ask yourself this question. Are you ideal or you are fighting for God also? This brings to the topic for today is God is at war. Idleness is a curse. Being idle is a curse. Which ways can you be idle? God is holy. If you are living in sin, can you have God to fight with you? Can God get nature to fight with you? Can God have people to come and support you? Can God bring the right people to come and guide you? <laughs> you see where I'm coming from? Other things that you need to be doing in this battle is, are you praying every day? And when the Bible says we should pray without season, it's not morning, nine o'clock, oh, I need to pray, oh, six o'clock, I need to pray, oh, 10 o'clock, I need to pray, oh, I need to pray before I go to bed. It's good. But the prayer that God is asking us to do is constantly in our heart. It's nonstop. As I'm talking to you all and preaching right now, are you aware my heart is praying? It's become part of me now. Eh? I could be driving, talking to my wife, talking to my children, but my heart is praying. And my heart does not need to say a lot of words. Sometimes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Or sometimes my heart is just singing a song. You are Alpha and Omega. My heart is singing that song. Whilst I'm even talking to you all. Because if Satan knows you pray at 6 o'clock every day, Satan will attack you at 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> if Satan knows you pray at 11 o'clock, he will attack you at 12 o'clock. Your heart needs to be constantly what? Praying. The music just came. Your heart needs to constantly pray. Giving to your family. Not to a church. Oh. <laughs> Not to a pastor oh. to reach himself. Oh. The Bible says you are worse than an unbeliever if you don't take care of people around you. By you people, Ah, I need to pay tight. I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. Whilst you yourself, you are a priest. Your children, your, your auntie or your brother's child or somebody is in hospital and they need money to go to hospital. You go and give your 10% to a church. You are worse than an unbeliever. Why won't you give that money to the, some, the, the person in the hospital? Have you seen how the world Christianity has gone wayward? It's good to give the 10%, but that month, if something, ar ar look around you first. <laughs> because if you give it to somebody in a hospital who is a family member, charity begins at home. Is it not even powerful than going to give you a church? If everybody around the world is looking after their family, how will the world be? Because if you read the book of Matthew 25, Jesus Christ will spit you out. He will tell you, where were you 
when I need clothing to wear? Where were you when I need food to eat? I don't know you. Even men of God like me who are casting out demons. Jesus Christ, you say, even though you've cast demons, I don't know you. You'll be surprised the number of people you see in hell. You don't give. You look around you first. If this, this month you've got 300 uh, uh, whatever money in your country and you can, it's free, you can use. Look around you first. The blessings that will come in your life, your life will be different. Don't go and give it to a church. Have you ever seen anywhere Invincible War Army asking for money? Freely I receive. Freely I give. That is what Jesus Christ told me. If Jesus Christ gives you a mission, wouldn't Jesus Christ give you provision? Jesus Christ cannot say, go here and not give you provision. How to get there? Why are so many people so blind in their Christian life? You cannot come get blessing in a church. Then you go home. You are fornicating. You see, you come to church. You feel really good. You realize I've been blessed. You are manifesting everything. Then you go home. You are fornicating. You go home. You are gossiping. You lose the blessing. God is not human. God is holy. And the Holy Spirit is with us. To guide us, to help us, to fight for us, to do things with us. So if you are living unholy, how can something... It's like, you know, you've got a nice house. You've painted a room white. Then every day, you use the toilet. You get a, a cup of a toilet. Then you pour in your house. Can anybody come in the room? That is how it happens when it comes to sin. That's what happens when it comes to sin. You go to church, they pray for you, you get holy, then you come home, you pour toilet inside. Holy Spirit will not come in. Would you go in yourself? Look. Without repentance. Eh? And when I talk about repentance, that is, you are conscious of your sin all the time. If you lie, your heart goes, oh my God, I've just lied. If you gossip, your heart knows you've just gossiped. If you, if you are even thinking of having a looking at a woman or a man with lust, all of a sudden you know I have, have sinned. If you are constantly like that, Satan cannot come near you. But as soon as you get comfortable in sin, ha! Your conscience becomes dead. That is when there is no way back because Satan now has connected with you. So this day, the question is, God is at war. Are you idle? What are you doing? Because if you are idle, the Bible tells us in the book of Judges 5.23, An angel came, he said, Curse on Meru, said the angel of Adonai. Utterly curse its inhabitants, for they came not to aid of Adonai, to aid of Adonai the mighty during this war. Those people do not come. So most of us, do you know the worst person, the worst thing that can curse you is God? <laughs> do you know God curses? Look, that's the Ten Commandments. God says if you follow this, you'll be blessed. That's what God has said. Yes? So if you don't follow it, what will happen to you? Will you get blessed or curse? <laughs> God does not have to say, I curse you, my children. He's made things standard. But the world that we are in, oh, is the new covenant. Is the new covenant. So in the blood, ah, my sin is forgiven. So you are living in sin. You see. Hell is waiting. Because the Bible says, there's no sacrifice for you. If you are aware of the truth, yet you do otherwise. 
There's no sacrifice. The blood sacrifice is not there for you. <laughs> yes? So, I'm going to sh show you this slide now. So you can see what I'm trying to talk about. Can you all see the screen? God at war, idleness is a curse. Nod your head if you can see the screen. Yeah? So, try to make it very simple. We went through Judges 4, 5. Deborah, Barak, and Yel. Now, the interesting thing is, when Deborah made that prophecy, there was a woman called Yel. So, when the commander of the Canaanite ran away, went to her tent and what this woman did was she opened her tent and allowed the soldier to hide in there and the soldier was asking yell that I, I need something to drink and yell gave her milk the bible tells us she gave her milk but you know those days the milk is there's no fridge it's a goat milk if you leave it in a sack for two days three days it become fermented it's like alcohol <laughs> so uh, the lady yell gave it to the the, the this in the commander she drank it and she went to sleep and this woman took a peg, a tent peg, and hit it through this commander through the head into the ground and killed this commander. So when Barak were looking, the soldiers were looking and they came to the tent and saw Yel, Yel just told her, uh, him to come in, have a look what has happened to uh, the, the, the person you are, you are looking for. So that was the prophecy that Deborah said, today God is going to what? honor a woman. So she did not actually mean herself going to the war with them. But Yel killed what? Their enemy. So as you look on the slide there, it's very simple. God put a curse on Meros in uh, Judges chapter 5, 23. The curse because they did not do anything. So we are at war. What are you doing for God today? That's the question. Ask yourself. We wake up every day. What exactly are you doing for God? Are you in a church? Are you in a group? Are you doing any, any help? Do you go to church? Look, you are an invincible army. We are not a church. We are an army of God. When I say we are an army of God, I'm not alone. <laughs> you know yourself. For you to be here, you know I am not alone. We are army. So everybody needs to find a living church that they can go. You know a living church. If you want to know a living church that you are going, Read the book of Acts, the whole book of Acts. Then ask yourself, the church that you are going, are they doing what the book of Acts says? If they are not doing what the book of Acts says, run away. It's not a living church. You go to church, you sit down. Do you know who cleaned the table, the chair before you came and sat down? You do something for God, reading the Bible every day. If you don't read the word, how can you know God? When God is in the word and God is the word. Jesus is the word. If you don't read the word, how can you know God? You can't wait to hear from a pastor. You need to know yourself. So when a pastor is talking, you put in check and go, mm, I, don't, I don't think what the pastor is saying is right. Because you know the word. You need to be asking questions. Repentance constantly. Obedience. Are you living in sin? Are you giving excuses and living in sin? Oh, I am going to marry her anyway, so it's fine to have sex. No. If Jesus Christ comes right now, you are going to hell if there's no grace for you. Have you volunteered to do any work? Are you praying? Are you fasting sometimes? Are you praising God? Are you even thanking or you are always asking, asking, asking? And as I said, love, they're giving to the poor and the needy. Not to a church. Because you yourself, you are a church already. Your sister is a church. Your brother is a church. Your mother is a church. Your grandmother is in a village. Today, maybe she's not even had anything to eat. And you go and give your money to church. God, will, Jesus will ask you questions. You will not be able to answer. First Timothy 5, 8 says, If we don't give to our neighbor, especially our own family in need, then we are worse than unbeliever. Ask yourself, the people around you, are you helping them? 
So that's the word. God is at war. And for you to be at war, doing all these things and more, you are constantly at war. Hmm? Because Satan does not like giving. Satan does not like love. The Bible says all these things will be there. Faith, hope, but the greatest is what? Love. Because love what? Conquers everything. So that's the message for you all today. Okay? That's the message for you all today. Now, let me just end the share. And we go around the table. So we start with our brother, Mr. Crispin. If you just unmute. Okay. Yeah. So what did you learn today, my, my brother, Mr. Crispin? What did you learn? Uh, I've learned that uh, for us to success each and every day, we have mm -hmm. to, to pray every time. We have to be in the presence of God. And we should also uh, help our... When we to help someone, first of all, we should consider those that are around us, like relatives, before being tied to the church. Because Very love starts from our house. Very important. Yes. Very important. Anything else that you learned today that you are going to change in your life? Yeah. Uh, we need to pray constantly. We should not say time that I'll pray at six or at seven because if we say that we, I'll pray at six, Satan can maybe attack us at five. So we have to pray every time in our heart. That's good. And this is something that comes like, you know, you go to the gym. It's like practice. You practice, practice. All of a sudden, it becomes normal. Yeah. When you start, it's difficult. All of a sudden, it becomes normal. Then your heart is yes. praying. Thank you, Jesus. So your heart is always dwelling on what? Things of heaven. If you're not praying, thank you, Jesus. If you're not saying thank you, Jesus, sing a song in your heart. You know, our mothers, our mothers will be cleaning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are mm -hmm. They are human, yeah? You can do that in your heart. Nobody even knows. You are in the office. Your manager is talking, talking, talking. By your heart, you are praying. Your manager will run away if Satan is talking to your manager. Because you are on fire all the time. <laughs> you see where I'm coming from? You are on fire. There is no off day. That is why Jesus Christ said, I will spit you out. Look warm Christians. You know, look warm. They are hot sometimes. Then they are cold. They are hot. <laughs> you need to be hot all the time. <laughs> yes? That's good. That's good. So, our sister, Rose, what did you learn today? I think this is the second time you're hearing this message. Because last time you didn't hear it from the beginning. Um, what I learned today, I'm really thank God for... For Sandy here, and I really learned a lot concerning the prayer. We have to be praying our hearts because if we are waiting, like maybe as our brother said, six o'clock, five or two to pray, maybe there are a lot of things will be in our head, we will just forget. So, anytime we are doing things, we need to be praying our hearts, even singing, Oh, thank you, Jesus, that God will still hear us. And the second one is that, um. We need to be happy, everyone that has surrounded, surrounded all that means, like our brother or sister or neighbor, anyone. I pray that God will help us to do that because it's That's not bad. Good. That's, That's good. Bad. If today you are going to church and you yeah. feel like I need to give church 50 pounds, yeah? Look around you first and go, ah, in the family, who will benefit from 50 pounds right now? Maybe it's your, your grandmother. It's probably, oh, how are you doing, grandmama? How is that? Then all of a sudden, they will tell you. You give that 50 pounds. You go to church, you don't give any money. You get more blessings than giving it to a church. Is this not, is it, uh, it, it, uh, am I saying something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? I'm yes, not saying yes. you can't give to church. Oh. Yeah. But look at you first. It's true, sir. It's true. You, you know Satan doesn't like giving? No, no. It doesn't like. Eh? Satan doesn't like giving because you destroy their kingdom. That's true. And when you are praying all the time, you are on fire as well. So that's good. That's good, our sister. Now, our brother, our brother Joseph from Ghana. 
What did you learn from the word of God today? You are mute. <coughs> yeah, what I'm feeling is that I want God or oh, we should love one another. We should give to our fellow people. What I'm feeling is we should read our Bible, we should pray with our season. And I'm praying that God should give us the strength and the power to do that. Because most of these young people nowadays, most of the social media and things is driving us away from God. So I want God to give us the strength and everything to love him, to teach us the way, to renew our mind, to change us from all these wicked and bad ways I've been doing. So I will bring us more and together. That's what's happening That's today. Good. And I will today from now on, I'll change towards that. That's good. That's good. When it comes to sin, you know we are at war. What are you going to be doing with regards to sin right now in your heart? What are you going to be trying to go to us? I want to go to us, change my life. I want to read my word. I want to know God more because That's I want to know more. I want to know God because I've been living in sin for a very long time. I've masturbated him. It has given me a lot of problems. But right now, I want to give my life to Christ. I want to change. I want Don't to live a prayer for him. So... From this word I've listened to, I want God to guide me and protect me. Don't worry, God has said your prayer. God has said your prayer, my brother. God has said your prayer. Mm 